This week, learn how to make subplots the smart way, reducing the number of lines of code that you need to write, making your scripts more versatile, and a lot easier to maintain. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I want to show you some tricks, or maybe not even really tricks, but some different ways to do subplotting with matplotlib. So first, let's go up here. I've got a little bit of code pre-written. This is showing how a lot of folks do make subplots, and I still do this sometimes if it's just a quick plot that I'm going to throw away. But if it's anything that I'm going to use several times, I generally do a little bit better job on my code. So first we're importing NumPy, matplotlib, and using the matplotlib inline magic. So our plots show up in the notebook. I'm then creating some data. This is fake temperature data using nprandom.random. .random. This tuple in here is the size. So I want 100 elements in the first dimension, two elements in the second. If you want to think of this as a table, that'd be a hundred rows and two columns. Maybe that's two different stations with a hundred samples of temperature. And that returns a float between zero and one, not including one. So I'm multiplying that by 25 just to get something that looks a little bit more like temperature. If we look at its shape property, we see that indeed it is 100 by two. Then to make the plot, I'm creating a figure instance using plt.figure. I'm creating the first axis using plot.subplot. I want two rows of plots, one column. This is the first plot. Axis two, similarly, two rows, one column. This is the second plot. Then I call x plot my temperature data, all rows, the zero width column. X two dot plot temperature data all rows the oneth column, and that produces a plot like this. This is great until we get to something that has more data, or we don't know how much data there are going to be. So let's look at a couple ways that we could deal with that. So I'm going to create a new temperature data array. So mp random. Dot random. I'm going to leave it 100 samples long, but this time let's say we have 12 stations. Then for convenience, I'm going to create a variable called number of stations. It's going to be temperature data dot shape and the oneth thing. So that would be the second dimension or the oneth index dimension. So if we look at what that is, it's 12. So this would be the zeroth and the oneth. Notice I'm using long descriptive variable names. With tab completion, there's no reason not to. It makes your code a lot easier to read and your future self will thank you. So to do this, to make this in fewer lines of code, I'm going to say fig and axes, so I'm using unpacking syntax here, equals plot.subplots, notice it's plural, in rows is the number of rows I want. That's going to be my number of stations. I'm going to go ahead and set a fig size of 12 by 12. And so axes is now an array of the axes. So for example, I can say axes zero to get the zero with axis and so on. So to do this, we're going to write a loop for i in range number of stations. This is one of the few times it's okay to use a single letter variable name for a counter like this. Axes i, so we get that specific axis. We call dot plot on it just like we did before. And then from our temperature data we keep all the rows and get the ith column. So if I run this it takes a little bit to plot and now I have a plot with 12 subplots. 
Now, since I want them all to have the same x-axis, in this case, you know, having a common axis like time, I can use the share x keyword argument and set it to true. And now after that plot regenerates, notice that my tick labels are gone except from the bottom plot and all of the x-axis ticks line up. You can also do this for the y-axis. But what if we had a lot of stations and maybe I wanted some columns or maybe I wanted columns for some other reason. I was plotting temperature, dew point, and pressure. Well, we can pretty easily write a little formula to help us do this. So for demonstration, I'm going to say the number of stations is 20. Then we'll take a variable called plot calls, which is how many columns we want. So how do we figure out how many rows? Well, you might say it's just the number of stations divided by how many calls. That works if things are evenly divisible. If I wanted two columns and had 20 stations, no problem, we have 10 rows. But if I have 20 stations and want three columns, I'm going to get a fractional row, and that's going to cause things to blow up. So what we need to do is always go up to the next integer. So if it's 5.1, we always need to go to 6. We can do that with the ceiling function. And then I'm also going to make sure that this is an integer. So let's print plot rows and plot calls. So we'd have 7 by 3, which is a total of 21 potential plot spaces. So that will work for 20 stations. Now if I change this, if I have uh, 12 stations, we get a 4 by 3. If I have 13, we get a 5 by 3, and so on. So this is a pretty handy little snippet of code to keep around. So let's create one more set of fake temperature data. So numpy.random.random. In this case, I'm going to create 16 stations. The number of stations is temperature data.shape. Index into it. I'm going to have three plot columns for now. We'll use our formula from before. Okay, so now I'm going to need to go ahead and create my fig and axes using plot.subplots. And rows is equal to plot rows. And let's get those spaces out of there so this looks a little better. And calls is equal to plot calls. I'm going to go ahead and use share x and share y, just so you can see that work, and set my fig size to be 12 by 12. So now we're going to write a loop, but it's actually going to be two loops, right? So we have to go over rows and columns. So for i in range, plot rows. For j in range, plot calls. Nope. Now we're going to need to know which station we're on, so which column we're trying to pull out. Here we're getting two numbers, a row and a column number. I've seen people say something like, uh, you know, index is equal to zero. And then in here, they'll say something like index plus equals to one. That works just fine, but we can go ahead and write a formula to tell us what station number we're on or what column number. So in this case, it's going to be J, which is our column, times the number of rows that are in each column, so we know how many have been plotted, plus the row that we're on. So now we can do our axis plot, right? So it's a two-dimensional array now, so we have a grid of plots. So ij dot plot temperature data all rows and the station number column. So will this work? 
Take a second and think about it and see if you see any potential problems. Okay, so if I change plot calls to four and we run this code, first we get a name error because there's a typo. So we replace that, try again. So it's running and now we get a four by four grid of plots. What if I change this though to three? We get an error. That's because we're trying to index into something that does not exist in temperature data because our plot matrix has to be a little bit bigger now. So a three by five matrix would only be 15. So in that case, we're making a three by six matrix, which being 18 is larger than what we need. So we're trying to index into something that doesn't exist. So we need a little bit of a flow control statement here. So if station number is less than the number of stations, we want to plot it. If not, we're not going to do anything. So now when we run it, again, it takes a little bit. And there we have it with our two empty plots here. So this is a really nice way to make your plots versatile. I can go up here and change now to um, 25 different stations. Rerun it. I'm not having repeated blocks of code, which is always an indication that there's a better way to do it. My code is also now very versatile, which is great. If I get more stations coming in or more different types of sensors on each station, my code just adapts. So we'll look at some more ways to do intelligent plotting in some of the upcoming MetPy Mondays, but I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.